Hello, hello. This is Shelly from Platform Services team. Today, we're going to talk about the monitoring octopus, Cystic. All right. So Cystic is one of the shared services provided to application teams on OpenShift platform. Um, and teams are highly encouraged to use it for their application resource usage monitoring or to monitor their application or service performance and status. Um, so please expect this to be the first video of a series of uh, Cystic how-to videos that will come later. So at the moment, we are working with the Cystic custom support team to generate a bunch of the how-to videos for our application teams to consume. Um, and as of the first one, we will go through the process of onboarding to Cystic. That includes uh, the steps to log into Cystic, um, and how to create a Cystic team assets for your application team. Um, and then we'll quickly uh, look at some of the default dashboard templates that are created for each Cystic team to use. Um, so before I go ahead, I want to quickly mention that for all the steps that we're going through today, we do have thorough documentations here. Um, at the moment, we're looking at the Cystic documentation on DevOps website. Um, by the time that you're watching this video, it might be uh, available on our new document website on WordPress already. Anyway, uh, we will include the link to the document as part of the description of the video, so you can get it from there directly. All right, so now let's get started. Um, so I'm going to follow this documentation like step by step, because I assume that's how you will be doing yours as well. Um, and now in this document, like you should be able to just find it if you search Cystic on DevOps, and I, um, I, I think it will be the same thing on the same uh, document website as well. Um, so first thing first, we want to sign into Cystic. Um, and then later on, we'll like go through the steps on how to create a Cystic team assets, how to verify that has been created successfully, um, and then look into the dashboards. Um, so. Here you can see the links to the Cystic service directly. You can just click on them and open it up and then uh, start logging from there. Um, I got one open here as well. So you will see the same view uh, when you click on the links. Um, so we have single sign-on set up for Cystic. Um, so that's that for logging, you will be using the Open ID Connect instead of the user credential login here. Um, so don't use this part. Instead, come to like um, the end of the list and click on Open ID. The company name will be uh, BC, uh, BC DevOps. So after you have that, click on login. And um, it will like, cause this is not the first time for me to log in, but for yours, if it's the first time, then you will be redirected to the SSO page. And then you can select on uh, GitHub accounts. So GitHub is currently the only um, login method allowed. Um, so click on GitHub and then log in through your GitHub account. And then you will be redirected to like the same uh, landing page on Cystic that you're seeing now from my screen. Um, and because this is default, like you don't have anything set up with Cystic yet, uh, pretty much you're just going to see this like blank page here. Uh, but what is important is that if you come to this bottom left corner, you will see your name here, hover over it or click on that. You can see some of the more of the details of your account setup. Um, so for example, when you look into my teams, now uh, you can see that I am with the catch all team. So this is the default team for every uh, new users coming onto Cystic. Def uh, the default catch all team doesn't really give you access to anything. Um, and that's why we need to create the team access uh, for like each application team specifically. Uh, but what is important is that here under your name, you see the user and that is the email address that's associated to your account on Cystic. Um, so basically those will be the primary emails that you set up for your GitHub account. So this is very important because Cystic recognize users by um, the email address instead of like uh, the username or the user ID or whatever. So um, before you can set up your team assets, um, you will need to like ask or your team members who need to interact with Cystic to first log into Cystic, just like what we are doing now, and then capture the email address and you need to gather all those uh, email addresses from your team members first, and as well as yourself. Okay, so now I get it copied. Um, so what we're going to use that for is to create um, your Cystic team definition. And then uh, we'll be assigning each user the corresponding role that, you're, that they would need on Cystic. 
Um, yeah, so now we are done with the login part. And then coming to the second part of that, uh, we are going to create the cystic team assets. So behind the scene, there is uh, an OpenShift operator that uh, does the automation to create the cystic team scope and create the default dashboards for every application team. Uh, but what teams need to do is to create something called a cystic team custom resource. Um, and this custom resource is what the operator will be looking for. Uh, it, will uh, it will contain like a bunch of the information for the teams that you're going to want. And the operator will uh, take that parse it and then uh, make a bunch of the cystic API endpoint calls um, and create the team and the dashboard for you. Um, something to note is that when you're creating this cystic team custom resource, it should be created in your tools namespace. Um, this applies the idea where tools namespace um, is where the DevOps components live. Um, so for example, your CI CD pipeline, your code quality checks, and of course your monitoring stuff. So um, create a custom resource for your team in the tools namespace. All right, um, here uh, is a screenshot of the OpenShift manifest for the custom resource. Um, so there are three important parts of that. The first one is the metadata. You will want to name it the way that it comes with the license plate of your OpenShift project set and the dash cystic team. Um, and then make sure to place it in the tools namespace. Um, and then coming down to the specifications, um, you want to put a meaningful description for your assistant team. It's going to appear on the, the actual uh, team scope on Cystic. Um, and then the most important part of it is the list of users. So for every user, it comes with two things. Uh, the name of it, which will be the email address that we just captured from the Cystic page, and then the role of the user. So there are three different roles that you can give to a user on Cystic. Um, so for admin users, like for your DevOps roles or for the developers who's going to uh, create the monitorings, uh, do some explorations of Cystic, we'd recommend to give those roles the uh, team edit role. So this is like the admin of the team. And then they can use like all the features that Cystic provides. Um, and then it comes to the standard users. So standard users are pretty much the same as like those admin ones. The only difference is that standard users, they don't have access to do explorations. So they will be those people that are mainly leveraging on existing monitoring dashboards or existing metrics um, and to like do the long-term monitoring and create alerts from it and so on. Uh, the only difference is that they don't, they don't uh, like they wouldn't have the access to explore on new queries, to try out new different metrics, and uh, they're more like the consumers of it. Um, all right, so uh, that should cover like well for your DevOps roles, for your developers, and for like uh, anyone in your team that need to uh, really interact with Cystic. And then the last row is uh, the team lead. So this uh, by the name, um, it tells that it's a view only user role. Um, so this will fit well, for example, for your product owners or for any business area people that only need to see the statistics of your application metrics or to just see how like, things are going, how well um, the service are, like, that type of things. So they don't interact. They, they won't be able to edit any of the dashboard. They, they are only there to view it. All right. And then, of course, um, for each row, you could have multiple users. Um, so, so it's not like one-to-one, -one, it's one-to-many. Okay, so uh, this is only a screenshot. So you probably want to get the code for the manifest for that. So here is a link to the repo that has a sample uh, Cystic custom resource manifest. Um, so you can just copy paste that um, and change like all the variables into like the, the values that matches your project set. For now, um, I got one here ready from my local um, for the demonstration purpose, like just get it ready and get started real quick, right? Um, all right, so let me clear it over here. And uh, as you can see, um, I got it set up where it's using the project set prefix and it will be placed in the tools namespace. I got the description and the list of users. So now what I need to do first is to make sure that I'm in the tools project. Um, okay, all set. And to uh, create this custom resource, it will, I will be just running the OC create command. So, so it, it works as like how the other OpenShift objects are. So I will do it, oops, 
OC create dash F and then um, the file name uh, of the custom resource. Just gonna give it some time. Um, and now it says that it's created. So at this moment, uh, what it meant is that the custom resource has been created and then the operator should be able to pick it up and start to like do the job to create the actual thing on Cystic. However, it does not mean that your Cystic team is ready for you on the like on the Cystic page over here already. Uh, so instead, um, let's give it like maybe a five minute or so for the operator to finish the job and then you can check again. And yeah, so now you might wonder like, how do I actually check? Oh, so just now we have like uh, created the custom resource with the file already, right? So we want to verify that the Cystic team has been created successfully. Um, so the way to do that is to use OC Describe. So the OC Describe is like very helpful um, in many, many scenarios. Like you want to describe all the projects or all the objects that you have been created for your project and see the status of it, then use OC Describe. And the format for that is OC Describe and then the type of the object and then the name of the object. So now I'm just going to copy paste that one in and then um, I'll get the name of my custom resource. So when you do uh, describe, you get to see like the specifications of the uh, component uh, of the object. And if you scroll to the very end of that, you also see the status of it. Um, at the moment, you can tell that um, it says uh, it's waiting for the next reconciliation already and it has been successfully processed. So that's that um, like I should be able to find the specific team created for me already. Now, let me just come back over here and then come to Cystic again. Um, and I'll do a refresh and come over here to my profile. And now I can see that I have another team created and uh, is with the name of my project set, license plate and the dash team. So this, is, uh, this, this will be the team scope that I will be using for all of the monitorings for this project set. So uh, this project set is where we have the documents service um, hosted with. Um, so now once I switch to this team, I should be able to see a bunch of the monitorings and the metrics for the documents application. Um, so something to note is that whenever you're working in Cystic, um, everything should be scoped to a specific team. So say if you have multiple projects set up with Cystic, uh, or multiple project sets set up with Cystic, then you always need to switch to that team first and then we'll start to work on the monitoring setups for that project set. All right, so now you can see like this one has a check. So that means I'm on this one. Uh, I'm, on, I'm on this like Cystic team scope already. And what we're looking at here is uh, like, now this is like the new landing page uh, where we actually see a dashboard. Uh, so earlier, I mentioned that like uh, whenever there's a team created on Cystic, it comes with a bunch of the default dashboard templates for teams to use, right? So this is one of them. Um, so the way to find that is come over here to the, the left, hand, uh, left hand side menu bar and then come to dashboards. Um, you will see, first of all, the one in the shared by my team. So this is uh, one of the, the default templates that our team created for teams to consume. Um, so it will start with like template and then dash and then the name of it. So the one that you're looking at now is the resource allocation dashboard. Um, so for example, if you're going through the process of requesting for a quota increase, or if you just want to like, monitor on like, how much resources your application is consuming, how well it's doing with utilization and that, that type of things, um, this dashboard will be really handy for that. Um, for example, it comes, so first of all, uh, when you look at the scope of it, uh, is first like scoped under your team scope, it will show like entire infrastructure, but it actually is scoped by the four uh, standard namespaces that belongs to that project set already. Um, and as a template, we set it to just uh, target at your production namespace by default. And of course in the cluster, it will be on silver. Um, so say if your project set is actually on gold or on another cluster, then uh, you will see no data at first and you will want to come over here and then uh, pick the actual correct cluster instead of silver instead. All right, uh, but for documents, it's still on the silver cluster. So, uh, so far so good. 
Um, and then what comes with this default dashboard template uh, has three sections, um, the CPU resource allocation, memory, and storage. And then you will see an overview of like the, each individual components of that. Uh, because it's in dashboard, so you, uh, let's, do, let, let's not modify this one. Um, instead, create a duplicate of this dashboard, and then you can start to work on that one. So now I'm going to rename it. Um, so in let's say it's the production one. Copy and open. So now this will be the dashboard that I can start to do the actual work of monitoring. Um, so, so now I have everything ready. I can go through to see like how are things going? Uh, is my application really using up the resources that have been given? Um, so this is definitely a poor example because like you can see, it's not really using too much of that. Uh, even though I've requested for a lot, I'm only using like around 10% of it. So it, this is definitely a signal um, to tell me that I need to do some resource tuning on this project set. Um, all right, but so far so good. Like, like that would be the default dashboard that um, like, like the platform services team provide. But other than that, Sysd itself only provides a bunch of like the other dashboard templates that teams could leverage. So for example, if you want to do some troubleshooting, uh, come over here, there are some dashboards ready for you. If you have a MongoDB, that would be really handy. Um, and if you just want to look at like um, some status and performance for your pods in general, just like look at, uh, let's switch over to that dashboard and take a look into what will be uh, useful metrics for you. And then you can always take, a, take them out and combine uh, different panels into uh, your own customized dashboards. But like a lot of those uh, like templates here that they provide, they're really valuable. Um, so make sure you take your time, uh, try different templates out and see what are the things in it um, to get a better understanding of your application. Okay, but at this time you have the team set up, uh, you have some default dashboards to get started. So you're pretty much all set. Uh, let's come back over here to the documents. So we have verified that it's working. We have looked into your uh, like dashboard templates you're ready. Um, and so far, so good. However, if uh, earlier when you do the OC describes as a team thing and you don't see that successful or you don't see that message that says that it's waiting for the next reconciliation, that probably indicates that something went wrong during the process when the operator is trying to create your assistive team scope for you. So, um, at that time, you probably want to do some troubleshooting first. Um, for example, some things to uh, double check is that, are you creating it in the tools namespace? If it's not in the tools namespace, then the operator won't be able to process that. So that might give you, that might be the reason why it's giving you a failure. Um, I'll check if like the format is correct and so on. Um, so go like take a look in this troubleshooting section at the end of the document. If none of this helped, um, then don't worry about that. We're still here to help. Um, so we have a Cystic Rocket Chat channel um, where like all the teams who are working with the Cystic or like our team who's like supporting the service, we're all like here on this channel. So um, like feel free to come over here and then uh, post your like uh, messages that you get from your Cystic team custom resource. Um, and then someone from our team or someone from the community will be able to jump up and help you from there. Um, just make sure that you include like the name of um, your project set or the name of your Cystic team. So we know where to look for logs or look for the specific address if there is one. All right, um, yep, so that wraps it up for the onboarding part of that. And please um, stay tuned for any of the new uh, like how-to series for Cystic to come soon. Uh, okay, so enjoy monitoring and there you go, bye-bye.